Hello, good evening, welcome. It's Wednesday night, it's depending on who you listen to, just shortly after 9 o'clock or coming up to a minute past, or it could be 30 seconds after, we really don't know. Depends on whether you're with Apple, Microsoft, or CAT, or rugby, if it comes to that. Um, it's, it's, yes, we have good news for you tonight, I think, um, and then we have intermediate news, and then we've got some bad news, and, and it's all going to be good fun. Um, I'm joined tonight by a special Welsh guest who's been quite active with our first story and it's it's Nathan who is sat in the middle monitor there as you can see. Good evening Nathan, how are you diddling cock? All right? I'm all right, yes, not so bad. Good, good. What's uh, what's the crack down there in Wales? What's the weather doing? Is everything... Uh, well, if the sheep aren't cemented down they're probably flying around by now. Surely it's a bit dangerous to leave sheep cemented down down there. I mean, doesn't that mean that you've got a leisure centre built? Well, somebody's got to have one, I suppose, haven't we? Exactly right, yes, I suppose so. So Nathan's with us tonight, and in, in, the, in the far left-hand monitor, as you are looking at it, is the effervescent loveliness, the bound, delicious and beauteous babe that is the one and only Sav. How are you diddling, Sav? You all right? I'm um, absolutely great. How is yourself? I'm, I'm very well, thank you. Do remind me that I've got you on button number one on the keypad tonight. Okey-dokey. Which, yeah, which is a little bit of a change, and that, that enables me to do that, you see, so that we can sit and talk to each other that way. Which oh, I like that. Yes, yes. so I can I just... Which way have I got to turn? That way. That way, yes. Yeah, hello. Yes, hello. How are you doing? <laughs> I'm fine. How's yourself? Yeah, it's fine. If you're sitting looking straight forward, I can blow in your ear, you know. Oh, that's what worries me. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it might somehow. Um, we probably ought to do the show. Oh, that's probably a good idea. Do you think yeah. that's a good idea? Um, so, hello, good evening and welcome on Wednesday the 6th of November to VT Talk. Yes, indeed it is VT Talk, and the, the, the reason that we've got Nathan with us tonight is, uh, is because he's been, he's been very busy on eBay, and I'm, I'm not going to tell you the story, because we've got the horse's mouth here, so Nathan, tell everybody what went on from, from first principles, from the very, very, very first start. Well, basically, a couple of, uh, I say a couple of weeks, probably about two to three weeks ago now, um, there was obviously um, brought up on VT TV um, with some bits and pieces that I emailed over to you. Um, about a seller on eBay that was selling 100 milligrams of nicotine. Now, obviously, currently, legal limit within the UK, um, it's 75 milligrams. And most responsible vendors will obviously do 72 milligrams to allow for certain errors. Um, now, obviously, that was reported to eBay. And I thought, OK, fair enough. I obviously um, sent you the link. You did a, did a quick uh, sort of spruce, shall we say, quick flash of it on the... Uh, on the A. Yes, and, and it's, it's uh, there on screen now, the link to the right. nicotine it's solution. One of them. 100 it's milligram one of them. per milliliter in a 250 milliliter bottle for 47 quid, yeah. which sounds like um, a bargain. It does sound like a bargain, and any board who's not sort of experienced enough in DIY mixing um, is sort of going to use that and possibly quite get very ill off it. Now, obviously, um, it was reported to eBay, eBay removed the item. I thought no more of it. Um, however, I did sort of keep a tab on the seller and the reason I kept a tab on the seller is I bought it with the view to reporting him to trading standards. Um, I obtained all of the necessary information and the item was delivered. Now this is the bottle that it was delivered in, mm -hmm. um, which sort of made me a little bit weary. One, it's quite a high milligram and the bottle's so flimsy I wouldn't even put it outside of the safe. Um, and two, that's the labelling that it came with. Oh my God. We, we probably should 
uh, point out for, for the benefit of, of people that don't actually know that, you know, you might think, well, he's a vendor that, that, that we're attacking here. That's actually not the case. Um, the legal limit for nicotine is 75 milligram. And I think, as everybody knows, e-cigs have been under attack really for the last nine months, probably longer. Um, from people trying to point out that, you know, it's not responsible action to be using e-cigs. So the whole idea of self-regulation, and we keep on telling all the people that listen that, you know, we are capable of doing this whole self-regulation thing. This, if you like, is a means to kind of prove the point that we do look after ourselves. Sorry, Nathan, carry on. Yeah, no problem. Um, but obviously, that's the way that came now. Obviously, Torvine Trading Standards were obviously quite keen to get a sample of this liquid. Um, so when it was delivered, um, it was taken down in the box that it came in. Um, it, it was wrapped in, um, the only thing I could describe it is a poly pocket with a bit of sellotape over the top of it. Um, obviously, I knew what I was expecting, so I took the actual box down and opened to Trading Standards with um, a nice litre of propylene glycol. Um, they had a sample which has been sent off for GCMS testing. Um, the results of which I'm still waiting on mm -hmm. and the rest of it was uh, sort of diluted down to within legal limit and I was informed that I could keep that as it was obviously all done in good faith and obviously um, all the information's been passed on it was put to the correct legal limit in front of them they've also had a sample of what I have taken down to inform me if it is um, taken down to legal limit but I've been told by them not to touch it basically in, in the forms of how I want to use it uh, until the tests have come back, which is fair enough. It saves me about two or three hundred quid for testing it and stuff. Now, obviously, whilst all of this was going on, um, he's relisted the items back on eBay several times, mm -hmm. um, uh, which I sort of got a little bit ticked off with um, by that time. And it had got to the stage where I was on the phone to Stockport Trading Standards um, pretty much every single day. Um, not much was getting done. <clears throat> Uh, so it sort of went down the route then where I looked at it more with a legal point of view and thought, right, this guy's definitely breaking the law um, in several sense that he's selling it on eBay. He keeps relisting it. Um, I contacted eBay directly, their Le London-based office, um, spoke to eBay and said, right, this is the situation. Um, give them a detailed description of how he's breaking the law and how they're sort of inciting it, although they're removing it when it's brought to their attention, given the fact that they've removed the same item more than twice, they should have removed his selling rights. Yeah, you would, all, um, you would um, almost have said that they were accessories. Yeah. Um, so basically I went on that route with eBay and they suspended his PayPal and his eBay account and removed all the listings off his account. Um, oh, which was okay and fair enough. Um, with that then, I obviously proceeded um, knowing that it wasn't going to be listed and he had no other means of sort of shifting it. Um, I went down the route of contacting uh, Greater Manchester Police. Um, Greater Manchester Police was sort of, oh no, it's a matter for trading standards. It's a matter. I said, listen to me now. It's not a matter for trading standards. I said, the guy is breaking the law. You enforce acts and statutes and common law. And this is um, an act that was brought in by Parliament of 1972 Poisons Act, which is enforceable by trading standards and yourself. And they were sort of a little bit ticked that I put them in their place. Um, but they have, <laughs> they, they have um, followed it up. Um, and as far as I'm aware, um, obviously, the email which I received back after I sent a lovely email to... Um, Stockport Trading Standards, um, Catherine at Decita, um, my local trading standards and got several people around the country to contact their trading standards with a sort of draft email as to which I'd done for them. Um, everybody was sort of, by Monday morning, I think their inbox was full um, and I had no choice but to take action on it. Um, I sent them a lovely email on Sunday night and rung them 9 o'clock on Monday morning and by said time, I think it's about 11 o'clock um, that morning, I had an email back from um, Kate Plumley at um, Stockport Trading Standards basically saying thanks for your email concerning the sale of overstrength nicotine via eBay. Um, your complaint is now part of an ongoing investigation. Um, now that to me 
um, basically means that they've been to his house, um, they've seen what's going on there, the police has obviously attended, and I would suspect there's other um, government authorities involved to a degree um, due to the fact that it's an ongoing investigation. Nobody won't tell me anything because I've tried um, putting a freedom of information and a subject access request into them. Um, but that's been sort of door stopped and basically said we're not giving you any information. Um, so it's a sort of um, multi-government investigation by the seams of it from what I can gather. Mm. Um, and I would highly imagine that Excise and Customs are involved in it as well because it was imported. Uh, yes, yes, you would. Uh, you would certainly think that that would be the case, wouldn't you? That uh, it with a with a response like that, that there is an ongoing investigation, so we can't tell you anything. That generally speaking means we've got the little bugger inside, and there's going to be a court case, and therefore we can't divulge any information. If CSI and uh, Law and Order UK and things like that are anything to go by, I'm seeing Sav full of concentration there. What's uh, what's a miss, Sav? I'm just following up um, ongoing conversations and chat. There's a, a lot of people being talking about this. A lot of well done's for Nathan for following that up. Mm -hmm. um, very boring has said, shouldn't uh, nicotine of that strength be in a glass bottle? Midge Dog said that's shocking. Um, Laurian Cerulean says, says, love the self policing that is going on. Mr. Kraken said, anything over 75 milligrams to sell, you need to be a listed seller. Special measures taken in the preparation and storage of nicotine and restrictions on selling. Johnny Lavery said, very pleased to see people acting responsibly against those who risk our way of life. Hope this story ends well. Lamental has said, if the seller is that unscrupulous to sell 100 milligram nick, who knows what quality is and what else is inside it. The seller obviously doesn't give doesn't care. <laughs> <laughs> Steady on. Was about that, the people do, who are mad. See, see, I'm just trying to work out whether that was toss or. <laughs> we'll leave it at that. Yeah. Oh, um, I was one of the one of one of the brothers' height. <laughs> and Mr. Kraken has said a small juice maker was talking to me the other week about some juice they got from China that was listed as 54 milligram. When it was tested, it came out at 66 milligrams. This is, you know, this is, it, it gets to me, does this. It really, really does get to me. I mean, all of these factories that are there have got the capability of properly titrating this stuff and diluting this stuff down and testing it and everything else. It doesn't take long either to do a test on the, this liquid. Well, I mean, it, you know, if, you t if you're talking about... Uh, it doesn't matter where the factory is, whether it's in Ireland, whether it's in China, whether it's in Azerbaijan, it doesn't matter where the factory is. They're producing enough of this and the profit margins are enough. Well, they should have their own in-house chemist with a GCMS and everything else that they need to find out what the proper level is. And when we hear the likes of Jeremy Main and various others coming up with the, the, the nicotine content is not what it says on the tin. Stuff like that doesn't do anything to help the cause. It, it just doesn't. It makes it very, very difficult for us to put, you know, get on our hind legs and say, actually, it is. It's what it says on the tin. Because, obviously, if it's labelled 54 and it's 66, if it was labelled 54 and it came out at 55 or 56, fine. 66 is just... It takes the biscuit slightly, doesn't it? Yes. I, I, I'm, I'm quite... There's, there's obviously room for error, um, especially when you're mixing in mass batches in forms of two, three, four, five litres at a time and putting that into 10, 20 mil bottles. Yes, fair enough. There's no... I wouldn't say normally, but there's obviously room for a minor sort of marginal error. But when you're talking a, a 10 to 11 milligram error, that's enough to make somebody ill. Well, I'm not. I'm not sure it is. I mean, I've I've vaped on seventy two, and it doesn't do you any harm. Um, you simply have had enough rather more quickly than you might otherwise have done. That's Get a the, little bit of a headache. Um, no, no. <laughs> I mean, talk to Peter Cole, who uses sixty milligram a lot, all mm. of the time, and it's not an issue. I've used 60 milligram juice with Peter before now and it actually isn't a problem. 54 I can get away with as well but you just don't use it for as long. You know no. yourself you know that you're satisfied bottom line on it which is 
is the way it is. I mean, it, it, this, it's not box elder proportions, but anybody that is particularly sensitive and is, shall we say, a, a chain vapor who spends all day with it in the mouth, if you've got that difference, that 11 milligram difference from 54 to 66, and you're going to dilute it down to, I don't know, 18, you're going to end up with closer to 24, and it could make a difference. I don't think it's drastic. I don't think it, it, it's nothing to it's nothing to get too worried about. But it's it's enough that it gives ammunition to those who would oppose what we do, um, mm. and that's that's the bit that worries me. Is there any more from chat, Sav? Uh, just something that uh, Lorian's brought up. She says, "Well, this." Um, liquid is the perfect example of what would happen or could happen if we're forced into the black market because this is the type of stuff we could be dealing with on a daily basis. The, well, the, exact. Sorry, Dave. No, go on, go on, go on, go on. Exactly, exactly. Just echoing what Lorian has said. I mean, you don't know what's in that liquid. As far as I'm concerned at the moment, I'm treating that liquid as if it's got PG200, which is practically what you would find in sort of antifreeze and stuff. Um, so until I know what's in that liquid, I ain't going to touch it. And if you're going to buy cheap bottles of liquid off the black market, if sort of medicinal regulation comes in, then you're not going to worry about stuff like that. And you will end up harming yourself because you don't know what's in it. Um, I'm, I know you want to come in there, Dave. I, I, yeah. See, I've, I've got, I, I just have a little bit of a difficulty with all of this. Um, gilding the lily and over egging the pudding. Right, you know, yes, you, you're not 100% sure what's in there. And there, there could be all kinds, but you would know very quickly. I have had tainted juice. Uh, and, and those people that have watched the show for a couple of years will remember we got some stuff that was ridiculously cheap. And patently, you had to wonder what was in it. And just by taste, I knew it was wrong. And it wasn't the flavouring either. It was the actual juice. You knew there was something wrong, and it got binned. Um, I think it, it, quite often people get a little bit too scared. You have to consider, I think, that when you were smoking cigarettes, you were taking... I've seen estimates as high as 100,000 different chemicals. I don't think it's that high. But even if it's 20,000 different chemicals, 80 of which are known carcinogens, and that I do believe... Um, it's most unlikely that you're going to do yourself any deleterious damage with slightly tainted juice. Even even insecticide grade uh, nicotine is not going to do you the damage that, that that smoking a cigarette would. And and this is coming from somebody that's got no problem with smoking. Never have had. Never will have. I think what a lot of people are getting at in chat, and I mean, Kat's also said this, Kat put in, we've spent the last five years or so policing our own industry, and it's now, it's more important than ever to be squeaky clean, so it's up to all of us to be observant. We are currently doing that because the industry, we are self-regulating. If that's taken out of our hands, it's going to make it harder for existing vapors to sort of self-regulate everything that's going on. Oh, I, I, absolutely, I agree with that 100%. I mean, you know, yeah. we've... At this point in time, we've probably got to be cleaner than squeaky clean. We've got to be on top of every last little infraction, I feel. We, we've got to have everything done according to Hoyle. There can't be any, yeah. any mistakes made in any way, shape or form, which is, which is why um, I think what you've done is cracking. And, and, and you know, you've got my thanks for following this through, because I know it hasn't been easy. No. Um, and I think it's, it's brilliant that we can demonstrate that, look, you know, we are actually watching what's going on. We do actually care and we are doing our best to make sure that the people that we use to buy from are doing everything the right way. And I'm, mm. I'm pretty sure that that perhaps hasn't been picked up on by the powers that be, by those who would oppose us. And this, I feel anyway, is a damned good demonstration that we actually do care that we're not just cowboys we're not it's not the wild west there is a level of care in the community i shouldn't say care in the community that's not the right thing to say is it no the community cares the right level of vigilant within the industry yes we're, we're being vigilant we do care about not just ourselves but also other people that are involved um 
will you will you keep us updated on on what's going on with all of this, please? Yeah, Nathan? definitely. I mean, as soon as I get the sort of test reports back, good or bad, um, good, then obviously I'll be using the liquid because um, it's taken down um, to around seventy milligrams thereabouts at the moment. Um, but as I said, I'm waiting for the reports to come back. So as soon as they're back, um, I'll obviously sort of uh, drop them off to you, and uh, we'll do another update on this. Um, well, but yes, of course, once the JCMS comes in, you'll know exactly where it's at because they've got the sample. Yeah, exactly. Yes. Um, and obviously, uh, if, if there's anybody else out there that sort of sees something that's a little bit out toward that they're not happy with themselves, um, if it's on eBay, it's a little button called report. If it continues to be done, then drop one of the VTTV guys, um, one of the VTTV guy, uh, team, rather, tongue tied you. Um, an email. It's catching. I've and sent it down to Wales as well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And obviously, it, it, if they need to, they can possibly get me on the back of that as well and I can do the same again. Um, or even look for me on UKV. Not a problem at all. I'll follow it up and let you know how I'm getting on with it and if I need any further information. Um, there's one or two other things that I'm doing currently now anyway, which you're aware of, Dave. Yeah. Um, one of which I don't know whether or not you want to do, and there's another one that I come across the other day, actually. Let's, let's, let, we'll leave that one for another time because I'm, I'm aware that we've got to go hurtling up to the adverts, but I, I just want to say thank you for the time being. Thank you for joining yeah, no us problem. for this first of the three halves. Um, that's Nathan down in Wales. You've got before something? I yep. have, before we jump to the adverts, I just want to read out what John Diver has put into chat because he's absolutely spot on. He says, actually, we're not self-regulated, or we shouldn't be. Trading standards should be proactively enforcing the 17 plus sets of regs that they, that they are responsible for. The extra we do is great, but it's wrong to say we're self-regulated. Um, yes, and John, you, you, are, you, you are absolutely, again, yes, spot, spot on. on. The fact of the matter is that what we're demonstrating is that trading standards job need not be that hard and that the community can indeed work with trading standards and the other bodies in the enforcement of the 17 plus directives that we are governed by, if you like. And I think this is a damned good example that the current system of regulation as it applies to e-cigs works. And that, I think, is probably the most important thing that we can get out of what Nathan's been doing, what he's spied. And uh, for that reason, Big thumbs up from me, Nathan. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Okay. We'll jump to the adverts, and then when we come back, we're going to go to the medium news. This might make your blood boil a little bit, um, but it'll all be good. I'm sure it'll all come out in the wash. It's going to be good, so don't go anywhere. Back in two minutes. in Yorkshire for your ACG needs. That's iVeber.co.uk and iVeber-elixir.co.uk iVeber and iVeber-elixir.co.uk are proud sponsors of VeberTrails.tv
And we are back in the room here on November the 6th, he said, like, looking at the diary. Um, in VT Talk with the effervescent loveliness that is the one and only Sav. Looking slightly ghostly on this shot, I'll freely admit, yeah, but, but not, not on that one, not on that one, not on the full screen. Whoa. Look lovely on the full screen. I was blue yesterday, but that's a whole different story. Dare I ask? No. Ah. But I don't know why I went blue. Every time I sat in front of my camera, I started normal, and within a minute or so, I turned blue. Ah, it's your white balance. Well, yeah, but it was on auto white balance. Yeah, but auto white balance doesn't work. But it does now, because I switched off and switched back on again, and now it works again. <laughs> That's the secret. That's the secret. Switch it off and switch it back on again. Shall we switch on to another camera and hit some news from down under? And I don't know, oh, yes. I have no idea. Uh, whether everybody that's in chat or watching on video on demand is aware of this, but this is the first of two quite similar stories, one of which may have a slightly different outcome. But let's let's go to camera four, which is uh, this one here, about from the Telegraph down under in Sydney, apparently. Anthony Campo pleads not guilty after being fined for smoking an electronic cigarette at a train station. I always thought it was railway station, but never mind. That's where he was. That's Anthony Campo, and that's his e-cig. And as you can probably gather, it's a, a lucky lady. Anyway, a retired builder, it says here, has become possibly the first Australian to be fined for allegedly smoking an electric cigarette in a public place. Lifelong smoker Anthony Campo caught the attention of police when he pulled out the e-cigarette while waiting for a train at Gosford Station. We need to bear this in mind on Tuesday. A 67-year-old didn't claim that he wasn't actually smoking because he said the female officer initially told him she was only going to give him a warning. Instead, she issued him with a $300 fine in the mail for smoking in or on a public passenger vehicle train public place. Maybe that should have been done in an Aussie accent. Mm -hmm. Anyway... Mr. Campo took the matter to Gosford Local Court on Friday, where he intended to plead guilty but hoped to avoid the fine. However, when Magistrate Alan Railton, who described the case as a first for me, said he had to enforce the fine, Mr. Campo changed his plea to not guilty. Producing a Ziploc bag containing the ciggy and a small charger, Mr. Campo told the magistrate it was only an electronic cigarette. Amid chuckles from the gallery, the bemused magistrate said, That's a good one. The prosecutor said, irrespective of whether it was an e-cig, the regulations defined the offence as including any tobacco or any other product intended to be smoked. Mr. Rilton said there was nothing the court could do but enforce the fine. Now, I've, I've got this in a number of different places, and it's the same story that keeps coming up with the same words all the way through and I have to say I think he needs to find a new brief um, I have no doubt at all in my mind that there will be certain people down under that will be uh, clapping their hands with glee at that and I'm not going to mention any names Simon Chapman um, but I do think following on a little bit from Sunday that the judge in that case was being um, Ant's friend, a deck. Uh, is that safe to say, Sav? Yes, you can say a deck all you like. Say a deck all I like. He's, so he's, yeah. being, he's being a deck because patently, obviously, if there's no burning, there's no smoke. If there's no smoke, there's no offence. There cannot be an offence. But apparently it's not just in Australia where this is happening. Let me uh, bring up another website this one's a bit more a bit more local shall we say and this is from your local guardian.co.uk based in Croydon and it says an electronic cigarette row sparks strike threat which is an exclusive by Andrew Bloss 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 workers at the borough's main landfill site have threatened to go on strike after a colleague was sacked for smoking an electronic cigarette the trade union Unite have accused Viridor, who run a waste facility at Bedrington Lane, of wrongly sacking Paul Scott, a worker at the site, for seven years. 
Mr. Scott of Carshalton was spotted by a manager smoking and was told he had breached regulations. 55-year-old said he'd been smoking an electronic cigarette as he was trying to give up smoking, which he thought was not against company policy. That's a somewhat tortuous sentence, that. Mm. Um, and no, trying to give up smoking can't be against company policy, obviously. Anyway, he said he was told during his disciplinary hearing that smoking an electronic cigarette was not allowed, but it was a new part of company policy and had not been communicated to anyone. <laughs> how the hell do you make that a company policy? If you don't tell anybody, how can it be? I mean, uh, yeah, right. A spokesman for Viridor said a robust investigation was carried out, which concluded Mr Scott was in breach of company policies and was dismissed as a result. Oni Kassab, the Unite Regional Officer, said as well as making a claim for unfair dismissal, they are now formally consulting with union members to take action. Mr Kassab said if strike action was to take place, it would be in the lead up to Christmas in mid-December. He said if strike action was to take place, it would affect bin collections in Croydon, as the landfill site would not be able to function properly and rubbish would have to be taken elsewhere. And the Beddington Lane site takes 63% of waste from Croydon, Kingston, Merton and Sutton. Andy Sutton? Anyway, uh, there are more than 20 workers at the facility. Mr Kassab said this is really quite appalling. The man has lost his job based on the word of one manager who thought he saw a cigarette. It simply is not appropriate to sack somebody based on this appalling lack of evidence and when the individual has offered a more than reasonable explanation. We have begun formally consulting with Unite members with a view to taking action to support our member. Mr Scott said he was angry at how he was treated and said he will take the case to an employment tribunal and so on and so on and so forth. Um, it's a very long shot that I will get to go back. He says, hopefully, if people decide to strike, then that will put some pressure on them. I've got a lot of people on my side as they are disgusted with the outcome of this. They are all standing behind me. A spokesman for Viridor said they are yet to be approached by union representatives about any impending strike action. Um, and that's where that one lands. Now, two court cases, well, one court case and one that looks as though it's going to be a tribunal and court case and possibly a strike. Sav, what's, what's your personal take on this one, straight off? On that one, I mean, the thing that sticks in my mind from that story is how can you get sacked for breaking a rule that nobody told you was a rule? Yes. It's just crazy. I mean, fair enough, each company can have their own individual policies, but you can't act on that policy if your staff are not aware it's a policy. Well, quite absolutely right. I mean, you know, if you would have thought that somebody would have had the common sense to put a dirty great big notice up or send a letter out to everybody or whatever. But apparently, Viridor said, according to the reporter, that nobody had been told. And we haven't told anybody that we've got this new policy. We've just got this new policy. Um, and it seems it's fair enough. If they have the policy, fine. It's what we were saying the other day about smoking bans in venues. If they at least have a policy and they tell you what that policy is, you can make an informed choice as to whether you use the venue, whether it's a pub, club or whatever it happens to be. But when it comes down to the workplace, particularly, something like that not only has to be announced, it has to be phased in in such a way that everybody is aware. Um, but I, I can't for the life of me see why they would take the view that an e-cig was going to be dangerous in the way that a lit tobacco cigarette at a landfill site where there's all kinds of acetylenes and God knows what else, flammable gases floating about. I get the, I get the, 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 the lit tobacco cigarette thing. I don't get the e-cig thing, but I have the feeling that uh, the chap might have something to say, have we? Yes, chat, I've got a lot to say. Uh, Vincent Brindle has said they need educating, there is no smoke. Mm -hmm. MP has said regarding the Australian one, he says, I'm starting to think the Australian government is even worse than the American one. Lorian has said idiotic. Blaze said fools. John, Johnny Lavery said it's so frustrating, he wasn't smoking anything and there was no tobacco. And regarding the Croydon one, Midge Dogger said, I so hope this guy gets his job back in compensation for wrongful dismissal. Mm -hmm. Whip it up 69 said, I wish they'd stop using the smoking word to describe vaping. Andy D has said, about time certain vapors stopped with the I don't mind a ban here, there thing. It's just like smoking and wake up. 
Ah, that's something we can come back to. Okay. Mitch Dog says he broke a rule he didn't even know about and got sacked. That's ridiculous. Uh, Lorian said United have not been in support of E6 before now. MPs also said there are so many wrong opinions in the UK about E6 at the moment. I've even had people say to me that they won't use E6 because they're more addictive than smoking. Who is spreading all these mental opinions like we don't know? Uh, well, we'll come to that in the third half. <laughs> Yeah, Strangely Mitch, enough. <laughs> Mitch Dog says we should have a vape meet there. Uh, <laughs> what, at the landfill? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Why uh, not? Mark Shaw has said this is unreal. Even if there were real cigarettes, people should not be treated like criminals for smoking. This has all gone too far. I, I, I completely agree, Mark. I mean, I think everybody knows my stance on all of this. I take a very libertarian view uh, to, to all kinds of stuff like this. And it is my firm belief that people should be allowed to do what they want to do um, unless it can be shown that their actions are going to harm somebody acutely and that, that's a technical word for meaning in a short period of time. I personally don't believe all of the garbage that's spouted about secondhand smoke. I never have um, because it, it, it just can't be that bad and there are all kinds of reasons and if people want to know what some of the the reasons I have that I can't spout out loud otherwise legal proceedings would probably be taken come up to the knees meet uh, this Saturday coming and I'll tell you what they are um, and then you can do with that information what you like um, but yeah I, I find this very very difficult to, to deal with but I do have one hope and I think it was Lorian that mentioned this about Unite yeah it may well be I mean I think judging by the Prime Minister's questions, which I watch assiduously every Wednesday, it would appear that uh, our government considers that Unite is pulling the strings on the Labour Party. This might just wake the Labour Party up if Unite decides to strike over this, because Unite as a union is going to have to find out all of the facts about e -cigs. They are going to have to uh, recruit people to represent them that know everything there is to know about e and can refute all of the asinine comments that come out of the likes of the BMA, for instance, which I'm here to tell you, I blame for this. That's my personal thought. I think the BMA is writing to far too many people with its asinine and uh, stupid comments saying that, you know, e are effectively fags. And just for the avoidance of doubt as well, in the third half, um, we will be reading a, 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 a section out that says it has been stated by so-called experts that e-cigs are possibly more dangerous than cigarettes. Just to trail that one a little bit. Is there anything else to add from chat, Sav? Sorry, because I would feel myself getting into a rant there. <laughs> Just a couple of comments from, regarding the BMA and a lot of people who have exactly the same opinions as you do regarding their letter writing campaign mm. oh well that's that's fair enough i did mention saturday i didn't have the knees meet oh i'm not sure if you mentioned saturday in the knees meet i tell you what your mum did a brilliant mention of saturday in the knees meet because I, I, if you don't know if you if, if you're brand new to vapertrails.tv and you don't know we've got a team here that we've all got different skills mine's being an asshat that's i'm um, the best at asshat on the planet and I stutter for England when I'm under stress have done since I was six but we've got we've got a fairly recent Mac convert who picked up editing software and just went yes and this is the kind of stuff she turns out
Um, I, I do apologise. I thought I'd turned that down enough that it wouldn't rattle people's eardrums out of the sides of their heads. If, uh, if you were trying to watch quietly, you have my apologies. It will be turned down the next time I play it. Mebbies. <laughs> Because <laughs> you, were, you were giggling at that, weren't you? I was. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I was just, just while the adverts were playing, I was just having a little bit of a think to myself. And it seems inconceivable to me that we, we don't have a Unite Union member in the audience. There's bound to be. There has to be. I can't see why there wouldn't be. Because it's the biggest union in the country and the most powerful of the unions in the country. If you are a Unite member, um, Get hold of, of the hierarchy up there and pledge your support. I would love to think that Unite, as a union, came out nationwide in support of Mr Scott and made a really big noise about it. That would be lovely. That would get the headlines. Something that we've been singular, finding singularly hard to do over the last 12 months. Nathan sent us the Schmidt, I'm going to sneeze. <laughs> It'll come when it comes. Yeah. It's definitely coming. No, it's gone again. No, it's yeah. come back. Ah, well, whatever. Yes. Would, do you think that would suit Sav? If we, if we had a nationwide strike in support of Mr Scott? I think that would be bloody brilliant. It would make people sit up and listen, wouldn't it? Not before time either. That would be exactly. cracking. Would, I mean, it really, honestly, it's time we started banging the drum. It really mm. is. I hope everybody's been and seen their MP, and, or if they haven't, they, they've got the appointment made. Um, because we really do need to start banging the drum. There's going to be a little bit of... Uh, education going on next week and I think Vapors will be very very well represented at the event next week. I, I really don't want to say anything more about that at the moment because it might just give the game plan away. Enough said. Zip. Let's move on to uh, an organisation called the International Union Against Tuberculosis and Lung Disease who have just had a meeting somewhere very warm, and very exotic. And this is their position, well it says on screen, position statement on electronic cigarettes, ECs, or electronic nicotine delivery systems, ENDS. Apparently they can't make their mind up what to call them. And this is uh, October, to be reviewed by mid-2015. Not quite sure what the review is going to do. Um, right, here are the key messages. And th this was attended, by the way, by the likes of Simon Chapman and I need go no further in names but you know the kind of people we're talking about. The union has issued this position statement based on a careful review of the scientific evidence the position statement will be reviewed by mid 2015. Now anytime I come across a lie or being frugal with the truth you will hear this noise. <laughs> so I'll start again. The union has issued this position statement based on a careful review of the scientific evidence. <laughs> the safety of electronic cigarettes or electronic nicotine delivery systems has not been scientifically demonstrated. <laughs> Adverse health effects for third parties exposed, second-hand exposure, cannot be excluded because the use of electronic cigarettes leads to emission of fine and ultra-fine inhalable liquid particles, nicotine and cancer-causing substances into indoor air. <laughs> The benefits of e-cigs have not been scientifically proven. <laughs> to date, very few studies have assessed e-cigs ends as a harm reduction and cessation aid and with conflicting findings. <laughs> the union is concerned that the marketing awareness and use of e-cigs or ends is growing rapidly. Well, that's true. That, that's not bad. That's one out of six. A range of current and proposed legislative and regulatory options exists. Some countries, such as Brazil, Norway and Singapore, have banned ECs ends completely. Also true. Ends could undermine the implementation of the World Health Organization Framework Convention on Tobacco Control, FCTC, Article 12, Denormalization of Tobacco Use. Use of ends could also hamper the implementation of Article 8, Protection from Exposure to Tobacco Smoke, <coughs> as end users in public places may claim that their electronic cigarette does not contain tobacco and or does not produce second-hand tobacco smoke. Hang on just a minute. We don't have to claim it because that's true. That's a big one. <coughs> the union strongly supports the regulation of the manufacture, marketing and sale of electronic cigarettes or electronic nicotine delivery systems. The preferred option is to regulate them as medicines. 
Mm, that's true. If regulation as medicines is not feasible, the following measures should be considered pending the availability of reliable evidence. The reliable evidence is already there. But, and this is where you need the 72 milligram in whatever device you're using. They want a comprehensive ban on all advertising, promotion and sponsorship. Promotion for tobacco cessation to be prohibited. Display of ECs and ends in retail stores to be prohibited. Sales to minors to be prohibited. Uh, ECs, ends and their refills should not be sold in flavours that are appealing to children. Packaging and labelling of ECNs, cartridges and disposable ECs ends to include a list of all ingredients, stipulate the quantity of nicotine and include appropriate warning labels. They already do. ECs ends should not be used in public places, workplaces or on public transportation. Consumer safety standards for EC cartridges to be established including ensuring manufacturing consistency and regulating the maximum quantity dosage of nicotine they may contain. Now, question is, why would you bother doing, what is it, um, five, six, seven, and eight, when you've got one, two, and three, as in you can't advertise them, you can't promote them, and you can't display them, so you can't bloody sell them. Jesus. And then it goes on with a whole load, and there's the bit. The Food and Drug Monitoring Agency in Indonesia has warned the Indonesian people that electronic cigarettes could be more dangerous than regular cigarettes. Electronic cigarettes are illegal in Indonesia. I'm going to go onto another screen, that one, and I'm going to say, Sav, can you read anything out that's been typed into chat? Very little. <laughs> go on. Very little. At gloves, all. Um, gloves are off. Have at it. <laughs> Laura Hina says, oh yeah, more morons. Very boring says, oh, more cut and paste statements. Mike Brown has said, my God, what a load of bollocks this report is. Yes. My favourite comment of the night so far, coming from Liana Lawless, who has been incredibly polite, saying, I hear testicles. <laughs> <laughs> I <laughs> hear bollocks and there's no one there. Yeah. <laughs> Very boring, says, just for a change. Wow, my goodness. That's, they like their slurry, don't they? Uh, Slurry. Make, yeah, <laughs> and his that, words as well, don't we? <laughs> oh, it's not the posh word for shite then. <laughs> no, no, he was being good. He was saving me, making up more words. Um, Formigo has said, yeah, prohibition really works. See Uruguay. And Mark Shaw has said, for the life of me, I can't find any evidence that Brazil, Singapore or, or Norway are world leaders in public health policy. Uh, I think Norway, no, they're not. They're not world leaders in anything, are they, really? Mm -hmm. Even in Brazil nuts. No. Brazil's not a world leader in Brazil nuts, apparently. Mm -hmm. um, th there was another bit that came up in this. I just wanted people to be aware of, of the, the, the depth of the crap. Most ends are shaped to look like their conventional tobacco counterparts, e.e. cigarettes, cigars, cigarillos, pipes, hookers or shishas. Interesting. They are also sometimes made to look like everyday items, such as pens, USB memory sticks, for people who wish to use the product without other people noticing. Where included, the levels of nicotine can vary drastically and cartridges can also contain candy-like flavourings. These products are not currently regulated or monitored so that the contents may vary between different e-cigarettes and may not be known to the consumer. Um, and apparently, ends initially emerged in China in 2003. Wrong! and have since become widely available globally, particularly over the internet. Documents from the Legacy Tobacco Documents Library also show that Philip Morris Company was experimenting with electronic cigarettes as early as the 1990s. Again, wrong. Absolutely, completely, totally and utterly wrong. It was 1968, not the 1990s, when Philip Morris was looking at them. 1963 for Lorillard, and during the 70s for the other ones. Um, I find that galling. Yet again, we have what should be uh, a reasonably well set up organisation that should actually know what it's talking about, proving that it, it doesn't know what it's talking about. In fact, what it's doing is describing one of the brothers' height, Utash in this case, or Pylosh, that's what that is. Utash yeah. height. I mean, chat have said that's all Gary Dibley's fault. Eh? Well... He made an e look like a tin of a biscuits, so that must all be Gary's fault. 
Ah, oh, that's what it is, is it? Yeah. And Moonlit has said, Oh no, these crafty vapors are hiding their insidious devices in everyday objects. I... 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 I maybe it's me. Maybe it's me. But I... I honestly, I refuse to bow to these cretins. They make me sick to my stomach. They absolutely do. Because this is nothing more than a prohibitionist agenda. Attempting to force people away from... Something that's going to do nobody any harm, and I mean nobody any harm, onto something that, if we are to believe the reports from the ants themselves, kills one in two people when used as directed, and apparently deleteriously affects the health of the people around them. Now, as I say, I'm not convinced by that, but let's take them at their word. If you buy and use lit tobacco cigarettes, one in two of you will snuff it earlier than you should and you'll take a few innocent bystanders with you. Call it collateral damage if you will. We know from the scientific literature and all of the work that's been done over the last two or three years that the exhalate, the vapour from an e-cig harms no one. It's as obvious as the bald patch on the back of my head, the nose on my face, and the sheer ugliness of my whole being. It's that bloody obvious. And yet, we have people who you would otherwise respect spouting this kind of rubbish at the drop of a hat in a conference which really ought to know better. And I, I'm, I'm going to try and get hold of an, an attendee list because... Ah, oh, I'm sorry. I've, I'm going to throw it back to chat. I, I'm, it, it, it's beyond what You know I want to spit. It's, I know. Ugh. I know exactly what you're saying. I mean, Vinny's just said, you can't win. If it looks like a sig, it's wrong. If it looks nothing like a sig, it's wrong. It's disguised as something else. It's madness. Moonlit has said, it's worse than banning something that does nobody any harm. It's preventing something which is doing harm. And Formigo has said the e -cig does not fit in their end game scenario. That's all. It has to be their way or no way at all. They're just egos and not the good kind. Exactly right. I mean, it, 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 this, this, is, this is all about them having their own way. That's all it is. They want to get the kudos for wiping out lit tobacco usage globally. They don't want anybody else to get the medal for that. And I think... That is the very, very worst form of egoism or egotism or egotistical behaviour. And this is coming from somebody, and I'm here to tell you this, I've always been quite egotistical. Always. And I've always loved the adoration and adulation of an audience when I used to be in a band. It, may, it really made me feel good. But seriously, honestly and truthfully, and there are plenty of people who will attest to this, these days I'd much rather see other people being successful and help them do that. And for the life of me, I cannot understand why these people who are determined to see the end of lit back or smoking cannot see that if they wind their necks in and actually allow e-cigs to continue to grow the way they have over the last three years, that by the time we get to 2025, 20, 2030, there or thereabouts, over 90% of people using nicotine will be using e-cigs. There'll be 10% or less that are using lit tobacco cigarettes. Now, there's one or two people who said, but Dave, you're a libertarian. You cannot be against tobacco. I'm not. What I am pro is choice. And if people choose to use an e-cig over using lit tobacco, that's fine. If tobacco ceases to be a profitable good to sell because people have chosen what they regard as being a better way, I'm really, really good with that because it's all about choice people have chosen to do that what i can't stand is people being forced to do that even worse is people being forced to do that by this whole phenomenon of social engineering 
and that's the propaganda that you see. That's people constantly dripping at you. That's these adverts that show tumours growing out of fags and stuff like that. It's all social engineering designed to make people believe things that are not necessarily as true as they appear. There's been studies done which show, and this is official mind, this is from government studies, that show that smokers almost 100% overestimate the damage that is done to them by smoking cigarettes. So it's not as bad as smokers think it is. And the, the, the anti-smoking people think that's brilliant because they've won the propaganda war and that is the bit that really sticks in my craw. So yes, if by the time we get to 2030, 95, 98, 99% of people are using e-cigs and there's only a very, very small minority using tobacco cigs, I'm good with that because it'll be done by choice. People have chosen to do that. The same as I chose to wear this colour glasses. The same as I chose to drink this particular cider. The same as I chose to use each and every one of the e-cigs that's lined up along the front of my desk. And this is a man that was a 60 a day smoker. Um, I hope a lot of people feel the same way. Sav, what's Chad got to say? Yeah, Chad, I've got to say, uh, Mitch Dog says, totally agree with Dee Dee. Just hope that what all these people get a vape in 20 whatever is of their own choosing. Uh, Mr. Krakens just said, half truths have more power than truth or lies. Politicians and government lapdogs have mastered half truths. Yep. And Mark Shaw says, it's because they do not want to see the end of it. The end of smoking means the end of funding and the end of their organisations. Well, I'm, I'm going to dive in on that one, and I've said this before. Anybody that is involved in the anti-tobacco, anti-smoking movement must, must, must desire to put themselves out of a job. If they don't, if they see themselves in a job for life, then their hearts aren't really in it and they're going to do more harm than good. And that, unfortunately, is as close to a fact as you can ever get. Everybody that is working in the anti-smoking movement should want to see themselves put out of that job. If they see it as a way to afford holidays to the Bahamas and flash cars and big houses somewhere, then they're not doing their jobs correctly. Not in any way, shape or form. Um, we've gotten pretty much to the end of the show. As per usual, I'm going to shove it across to my colleague <laughs> who, like me, will be out of bed at stupid o'clock on Tuesday morning to go oh. to London to, uh, to select her favourite quotations from chat because chat always has the last word. Sav? Chat have. And tonight's last word is, I'm going to have to edit it slightly, but it goes to... <laughs> to <laughs> I, love, I love it when you've got to edit them because I try and work out what was actually said because I'm not watching chat here. Uh -huh. This one goes to Jeff Caldicott and he says, why are we allowing these organisations and politicians to dictate to us? I thought we were a democracy and we were free. We need to tell these bar stewards to go away. And you're not wrong. We need to take our lives back into our own hands. It might need a revolution. Let's see what happens next Tuesday and next Wednesday night. Sav, Daz, Mark Jones and myself will be reporting back to you, possibly with Lorian and a few others. Who knows? But we will come back and tell you exactly what went on next Tuesday because we're all going to London and it's not just for a day out. It's going to be a day of really hard work and negotiation and debate. And I, for one, am looking forward to this um, because we're going to get to talk to people that we might not otherwise. Uh, so that's going to be really, really good. Can I say thank you so much for joining us and spending the last hour with us. It's been my pleasure and privilege to host this, and I'm, I'm sure you feel the same, Sav. Yeah, um, absolutely. Thank you ever so much to Nathan for not only doing what he did, but for joining us to talk about it. I think that that's above and beyond. That's brilliant stuff, and I think it, it, it's a great example of what this community is capable of doing. Tune in tomorrow night um, for the Here's Hour. When Keith and I, we're going to be having quite a cigar like night. Not for any other reason than I think we probably need to. Um, 
There's a whole host of stuff that we haven't had a chance to talk about tonight. I'll be tweeting about that. If you're not on Twitter, get on. You need to be there. Um, don't forget as well on Saturday, it's the knees meet. Did I mention that the knees meet was on Saturday, sir? So? It's the knees meet on Saturday. It is, aye, at the new crown oh, yeah. in, in South Shields. If you can get there, get there. It'll be brilliant. It'll be great. It'll I be, think I'll be going to that. It'll be fabulous. I, I think I am as well, yes. Yeah, yes, it'll be good, that. So we'll see you at the knees meet. Uh, on Sunday, Dave Tattlebox will be back with Dave in the driving seat, as he usually is. On Monday, we've got... The mod master himself, Gary Dibley, the man who's responsible for Indonesian people using... You said it, not me. Um, Tuesday night, Marco will be back, and then we'll be back next week as well. And don't forget, our Wi-Fi radio is on most nights of the week as well. Definitely Tuesday nights, Thursday nights with DJ Bobo. Um. I think we may have a new show starting tonight, actually, on our Wi-Fi. I think so. Pop over and check it out, because I'm not 100% sure. Have you, any, have you any clue as to what it might be? Not sure, but I think it's Nikki. Nikki's first show tonight, so and I think that starts at ten o'clock, so it's ten o'clock now, you better go. And we'd better yeah. go. Hey, we it's better. it's it's been emotional. I'm gonna pinch Gary Dibley's if he's getting the blame for it. It's been <laughs> it's been emotional. Thank you very much for joining us. We'll see you all tomorrow night on the Hairs Hour and later on the week for the rest of the shows. Take care and don't forget, vape on, vape hard, and don't let the bastards grind you down. I'll find it. There it is. Ta-da! Thank <laughs> you.